Now, before we close for today, I want to make a point that's thorny, not necessarily popular, because it steps on a lot of traditions. I'm doing this to give you food for thought. And it's a point I think we all need to uh, contemplate and consider because until recently, it really didn't seem all that important. All throughout chapter 4, we see the constant mention of the term Most High. Hebrew El, Aramaic Ile. Belshazzar, Daniel, uses the term. And Nebuchadnezzar uses the same term. But I promise you that the mental picture that each man had of the Most High and just who that is was quite different. That's because Ile, Most High, is a title. It's not a personal name. It's like our term president or prime minister, or king, or even mister. These are titles for an office, not the name of the office holder. We don't know who exactly we're talking about until we add the person's name that holds that office. As anyone who has lived past 20 years knows, all presidents and prime ministers and kings aren't the same. They have different sets of attributes, strengths, and weaknesses. They adhere to widely varying ideologies and morals and ethics, and they operate on differing principles. So to refer to the Ile, the Most High, is incomplete. In a certain respect, Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar were just talking right by each other. Daniel probably realized that. But I can't imagine that Nebuchadnezzar did. He was oblivious. That is why I tell you, and anyone who has the ears to hear, that there's only two ways to know God. His name and his attributes. God is a title. It's an office. Like president or king. God is not a name. The correct response to somebody who says, God ought to be, oh, which God? What's his name? See, today, especially, we can add to that What's his attributes and characteristics? And if he has a holy book, what is it? I'm sorry to say that so many Christians and Jews are oblivious to the reality that within modern mainstream Judeo Christianity especially is a movement to accept any name, to accept any set of characteristics for who it is that holds the office of God. And the catalyst for this seems to be an exaggerated and out-of-balance desire to evangelize Muslims. Of course they need to hear the gospel. The problem is, the desire is so great among many denominations and missionary organizations that, that, that just like with Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel, both sides accept talking to one another concerning the Most High, but they really only wind up agreeing that there is an office called Most High. There is God. Who precisely occupies that office is talked around. And his characteristics are generally either discarded or simply reduced to over-simplicity, such as God is love. So they can be assigned to any number of possible office holders. That is why, in what is loosely called today the emergent church, which is really just a new name for the liberal church, that the term Muslim Christian 
has gained acceptance, and it seems to go almost unchallenged. A Muslim Christian is defined as a Muslim who remains loyal to Islam at one level or another, but who also has a belief in Jesus and has expressed a commitment to follow his instructions, at least from a philosophical standpoint. However, this person does not believe in the deity of Jesus, does not believe that Jesus died and rose from the grave, and does not believe that Jesus is the Messiah and saves. The two holy books of the Koran and the Bible are seen as co-equal. Jerusalem, therefore, ought to be the co-capital of both Islam and Judeo-Christianity. And the foundation of the problem is this. Many Christians and most Jews no longer want to give a name to the office holder of the office of God. And they don't want to expound upon his well-defined attributes and characteristics. Because if that happened, there would be no way to have such a thing as a Muslim Christian. Such supposed middle ground suddenly disappears because it was all a mirage to begin with. Now, I could go on and on about this issue. But what I want to leave here today, I want to leave it with you, is the importance of knowing the difference between a title and a name and why God's name and his attributes are so terribly important for us to know and to understand and for us to be able to explain to others. And it is why, as believers, we must not allow any other name, any other set of attributes to be assigned to the office of God, the Most High, regardless of the personal cost. 